see beginner trying to sculpt in Zenry topologies just to make one character can be time consuming and challenging. Board, board, board. But don't worry, in this tutorial I will show you the easiest way to create a character like this one without sculpting or retopology. Just follow along, pause if needed and let's get started. Ok, first select the cube then, or if you are a beginner just press X. Ok, now press shift A, go to mesh then add a UV sphere. Zoom in a little closer to the sphere, then select it and go to edit mode. Change the selection mode to face selection and turn on both wireframe and x-ray mode. Ok, now press 1 to switch to front view. Select half of the sphere like this. Now rotate to top view and turn off x-ray mode. Zoom into the sphere and check if all the faces on the half side are selected. Now go back to front view and delete the selected faces. Then go to the modifier tab, add a mirror modifier and turn on clipping. Next add a subdivision surface modifier and set the viewport level to 2. Then turn off the subdivision modifier for now. Now switch to solid view and select the knife tool, which is right here. Select it then start cutting the faces for the eye, like I do. Press spacebar to confirm. Now let's cut for the nose. Start from this corner then follow my steps. Press spacebar to confirm. Now let's do the mouse. The nose ends right here so skip this row of faces and start cutting from here. Press spacebar to confirm. Now change to box selection and switch to face selection mode. Select the newly cut faces for the mouse and delete them. Now do the same for the eye. Ok, it looks good now, but there are some extra words here. Switch to vertex selection mode, then select the extra words here. At last, select the main vertex, then press M and choose at last to merge them. There is another extra vertex in the mouse area too, so do the same for this one. Ok, let's work on the nose. Switch to face selection mode, then select the nose face. Then press E, then Y to extrude them along the Y axis. Then drag it slightly forward. Select this front face, press G, then Y and move it forward a little bit. Now rotate to side view, select these three faces, then go back to front view. Press E, then X to extrude them along the X axis. Then drag them slightly to the right. Now press R, then Y to rotate it on the Y axis. Then rotate it to make it look straight. Now press Ctrl R to add a loop cut. Then right click to set it in place. Move it towards the face but don't attach it completely. Leave a small gap in between. Now go to front view then scale it slightly along the Z axis. Next add another loop cut in the middle. Then right click twice to confirm its position. Now scale it up on the Z axis. Ok now let's turn on the subdivision modifier and check our result. Everything looks good so turn on the subdivision modifier for now. Now go to front view, pick the knife tool and let's start cutting the faces on the ear. Begin from here and follow my steps. Now switch to face selection mode then select box selection. Select the new middle face of the ear then switch to side view and move them backward. Make sure they don't pass through the back face. Now turn the subdivision modifier back on and check the model from all angles. Everything looks perfect, you can also adjust the nose by moving the individual faces as needed. Now let's work on the nose hole. Go under the nose and select the face inside the nose hole area, which is this one. Press I to insert a new face then drag it inward to make it smaller. Now move it slightly apart along the Z axis. The hole doesn't need to be too deep since we are going to give it a black color later. Ok, we have now finished making the basic shape of this character. Go back to edit mode and switch to vertex selection mode. Turn off the subdivision modifier. Select all the verts on the eye. Then press E then S to scale them down. Move them inside along the Y axis and adjust them until all the sides look equal. It doesn't have to be perfectly equal. Now select these three words and move them slightly forward. 
Now select all the outer verts of the eye. Then turn the modifier back on. Press Ctrl B to bevel and drag outward slightly to sharpen the edges. Make sure the verts don't overlap. Now while the verts are still selected, go to the Object Data Properties tab and click the plus icon to create a new vertex group. Double click on it, delete the default name and rename it to iShape or any name you prefer. Now click Assign. Click on an empty area to deselect everything. Then go back to the property tab and select the select option. So now whenever we need to select this eye verts, we can simply select the group and click select. Okay, now go to object mode and add a UV sphere for the eyeball. Rotate it 90 degree on the X axis then scale it down and move it to fit inside the eye socket or the hole we make for the eye. Leave a small gap like this when placing the eyeball. Now select the eyeball, go to the modifier tab and add a mirror modifier. Select the picker tool and set it to the face. Now we have eyes on both sides. Select the face, go back to edit mode and select the same 6 bottom verts on the eye. Move them apart along the Z axis like this. We are doing this to check for problems so we can rig and animate the eyes easily. Now let's check the top part. Select the top 6 verts and move them downward on the Z axis. What the hell? What happened? I don't know. Don't worry, we are not done moving them yet. So now rotate to top view, then move them forward on the Y axis and slightly along the X axis. Okay, that looks great. We will animate this in part 2 of the video. Now press Ctrl Z until the eye goes back to its previous shape. Select the 6 bottom verts again, go to the Object Data Properties tab, add a new vertex group and rename it Lower Eyelid. Click Assign. Now do the same for the top 6 verts, rename the group Upper Eyelid. Check them by selecting each group and using the Select option. Okay, they work properly. So now select all the mouse verts, then extrude and scale them down slightly. Move them inside along the Y axis. Extrude them again and move them further inside along the Y axis. Press Alt Z to enable X remote, then press 3 for flight view. Scale them up on the Z axis, then move them apart on the Z axis to make the bottom lip look straight. Extrude again, move along the Y axis, then scale down and move downward on the Z axis. Now we have created a space for the tongue and teeth. Go inside the head and turn off the subdivision modifier. Select these four verts and press F to fill the gap. Place your cursor on the edge, press Ctrl R, then double click to confirm. Now select another four verts and fill them. Then do the same for the bottom. Okay, let's exit this area. Turn subdivision back on and check everything. Select all the lip verts. Turn off the subdivision modifier for a clearer view. Select them all, then turn subdivision back on. Now press Ctrl B to bevel and drag outward slightly, like we did for the eye make the lips sharper okay now the lips look more lippy i have no idea what that means but i know you get what i mean hold shift and select the inner words as well if it's hard to select turn on extra mode double check to make sure you haven't selected any other words okay everything looks good So now go to object data properties create a new vertex group and rename it to mouse shape then click Assign. Now do the same thing for only the top lip vertices, only the bottom lip vertices and finally the two middle verts of the mouse.
okay everything is properly set up okay now that we have assigned the names and groups let's select the top and bottom lip verts in the proper spanner Now scale them down on the Z axis to test if the mouse closes properly. Deselect everything then select only the lower lip. Press 3 for 5 views then move it forward to align it with the upper lip. As you can see the mouse closed perfectly. Now press Ctrl Z multiple times to undo everything. Go to object mode and check if everything looks good. Now let's make the teeth. Select the face, go to edit mode and switch to face selection. Select three faces on the bottom lip, turn off the modifier to see more clearly. Press shift to duplicate them, press P and choose selection. Now go to object mode, rename all the objects properly. and hide all objects except the teeth. Remove the subdivision modifier and apply the mirror modifier. Go to edit mode, switch to edge selection, then select the two edges on the end line of the teeth. Go to front view and move them down on the Z axis to align them vertically. Switch to face selection, press A to select all faces, then go to front view and press E, then Z. To extrude apart on the Z axis. Unhide the face to check if the teeth fit properly. Adjust them as needed by moving them slightly inside the mouse. Turn on wireframe mode for better visibility and make any final adjustments. Now go back to edit mode, switch to edge selection and select this 5 front side edge. Press Ctrl B then enter 0.002 as the value, then right click to confirm. Now extrude slightly backward on the Y axis. Go to the material tab, click new then click the plus icon to add another material. Click new again, change the color to black and assign it. This gives the extruded edges a black color. Go back to object mode and unhide all objects. Now go to front view, duplicate the teeth and move them apart for the upper teeth. Rename it to upper teeth. Now let's hide all objects and create the tank. Press Shift A, go to mesh, then add a cube. Zoom out, scale it down, then add a subdivision modifier and set the viewport value to 2. Ok, now let's go to edge mode, then scale it down on the Z axis to make it look like a tank. Now scale it on the Y axis, add a loop cut in the middle, switch to face selection, then select the backside face and scale it up on the X axis. Pull it down on the Z axis slightly. Switch back to edge selection, hold and end, select the middle edge. Move it apart a little bit. Go to front view to see it clearly and adjust as needed. Now go to object mode and hide the face and fit the tank inside the mouse by scaling and moving it. Turn on wireframe and x-ray to see the truth and fit the tank properly. Unhide the teeth to make sure the tank doesn't pass through them. Once everything is adjusted, unhide all hidden objects and Turn on the subdivision modifier on the face. 
right click and select share response now the only remaining thing is to create the ipo select the face go to edit mode and turn on the subject modifier add a loop cut here and here switch to face selection select the faces i am selecting then press shift d to duplicate them press p and choose selection go back to object mode rotate around and check everything Select the face and turn on the subdivision modifier. Now go to the material tab to add a texture or color. Switch to material preview and give it a face color of your choice. Select the eye, right click and choose shade smooth. Go to edit smooth, rotate it to this side, then deselect everything. Hold alt, select one face, then hold shift and select all middle face. Now go to the material tab, click new, then add another material and click new again. Change the color to black and assign it. Now check if the eye rotates properly. Give the eyebrows a black color. Now select the face, go to edit mode and at the bottom of the nose, select the face of the nose hole. Add another material, choose black and assign it. Now hide the teeth and give the tongue a light red color. Left click, select set origin then choose origin to geometry. Do the same for both teeth. Ok now we just have the eyebrows left. Select the eyebrow, go to the modifier tab and add a shrink wrap modifier. Use the picker and drop it on the face, then increase the offset value slightly. Rotate it to check how it moves. Now set its origin to geometry, then in the mirror modifier, use the picker and drop it on the face again. Rotate it again to check. It's rotating correctly but it's overlapping with the face. To fix this, set the offset value back to zero, then go to edit mode. Select all the faces and extrude them on the Z axis. Move them slightly forward on the Y axis. Now scale it up on the Z axis and move it backward on the Y axis to slightly embed it inside the face. You can adjust it further or leave it as is. Now go back to object mode, increase the offset again and change the mode from on surface to outside surface. Rotate it again to check it's moving correctly now. But don't rotate it manually too much because it will deform with the face shape. Also don't set the offset value to zero otherwise it will go inside the face. Now we have finished creating the face. Rotate around to check for any problems. Select all objects by pressing A. Rotate everything slightly on the X axis to make the face look straight. Now select the face, go to the modifier tab and apply the mirror modifier. Set its origin to geometry. Now hide the overlay to see only the character. Then check if everything works correctly. The ISO kit doesn't have a perfect circular shape. To fix that, turn the overlay back on. Select the face and go to edit mode. Go to the object data properties, select eye shape, change it to vertex selection. So first, select remove, deselect the unwanted areas, then assign. Deselect everything, then select the eye shape again. Now, left click and in the loop tool, select circle. Now, the eye socket has a circular shape. 